Hi, this is your host, Sapin Bharti, and we are here at KubeCon in Seattle. And today we have with us Ben Heinemann, uh, co-founder of Mesosphere, and you're also, you know, <laughs> of Mesos as well. Yeah. Yep. So first of all, it's nice to have you. Yeah, it's great to be here. Show. Thank you. So, so let's talk about uh, multi-cloud, right? Yeah. Because you know, these days it's it's no more about one cloud. It's hybrid cloud, cloud native, and multi-cloud. Mm -hmm. So why is why are you so much interested in multi-cloud? I'm interested because these days organizations uh, they they're trying to figure out how they're going to build their future applications, um, and some clouds have some technologies that are better than others. So they're already thinking that they might you know use some technologies from some clouds versus others, um, but they also want to give themselves the opportunity to be able to move their applications across clouds so they can potentially and have leverage on those cloud providers. Um, and if they start in a world where they're going to be, uh, you know, taking advantage of just the cloud's services, um, they're going to easily find themselves locked in. Um, you know, I, I, I think if you take a step back um, and you look at 10 years ago, so EC2 started in 2006, right? So we're uh, 12 years in, right? We're, we're, we're 12 years in on this journey of the cloud, right? EC2, I actually don't know when people first started using using EC2. Um, let's say it's somewhere around the, the, the 2006 time. When it first started to get adoption, when people went to the cloud, they didn't go for services. They went for VMs. We like to think about that as cloud 1.0, right? Um, they went there. They went to the cloud. They got VMs. And why did they go to the cloud? Because it took too long to get physical machines from their own on-prem data centers. Uh, or it even took too long to get virtual machines because there was still a process to get virtual machines from their on-prem on -prem data center. So more and more people went to the cloud to get virtual machines as quickly as possible. And then once they got those virtual machines, they'd install whatever they would have normally installed on physical machines. You know, they, they, they still did all the work themselves. They still you know, installed MySQL or in, in, installed Apache or you know, whatever they needed to do. Um, fast forward now, those same companies, they're not going to the cloud to get VMs. That's not what they're doing, right? They're going to the cloud to get services. And that's really what we call cloud 2.0. They go to the cloud because they want to get message queues and analytics services and notebooks for doing machine learning and key value stores and relational databases. You know, nobody's running MySQL themselves anymore in, in, in VMs. I mean, not nobody, some people are, but the majority are just going and getting AWS RDS, right? Um, and that, that transformation, I think, is a really powerful one, but it also means that you don't have the flexibility of going anywhere now. Because whereas in the past, when you had VMs, I could take that VM wherever I wanted to go. But now, if I'm tied to RDS, or I'm tied to Kinesis, or I'm tied to certain services that are part of a, one particular cloud, I'm pretty much stuck. Right? So um, it's, a, it's a real thing. And I think that the, the converging of things that are happening is, one, people want those services. They're going to the cloud to actually get those services. You know, we call that cloud, cloud, cloud 2.0. Um, and two is people are realizing, oh, geez, if I'm going to use those services, I'm going to get stuck, and what am I going to actually want to do? Uh, so, you know, multi-cloud's just becoming a big deal, and, and you know, there's a lot of people that also at the same time, they're thinking to themselves for that first thing for all those services, how can I get those services in my own on-prem data centers as well, right? Um, and again, that's one of the big things that. We've been trying to focus on at Mesosphere is all those services that we can actually run on top of our platform, um, except instead of being proprietary services like, say, Kinesis, there are open source software like Kafka, Cassandra, Elastic, Jupyter, a bunch of these open source services that we can ultimately expose back to people anywhere on, on, on any of the clouds as well as, um, as on-prem and give people that cloud-like experience. So that's why I'm, uh, that's why you know, I'm, I'm very interested in how we can do multi-cloud right and how we can do it best. So when we talk about multi-cloud, um, should we also think about multi-platform as well? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a good question. Um, uh, I think the, the biggest thing to think about with respect to multi-cloud, and I get this question all the time, is, and I, I alluded to it a little bit earlier, there's going to be some clouds that have some services that are just going to be better than any other cloud, right? Um, if, you, if you need the performance requirements for doing some of your TensorFlow processing, where you would need something like a TPU, mm -hmm. you should probably go to Google, right? right? Because 
that's the only cloud in the world that has hardware specifically designed for some of the applications you might actually want, want to build. Right now, again, I think GPUs will will help with a lot of that, and so that will that will make you go to any of the clouds. But let's say, for whatever reason, you've got an application that needs to be in Google Cloud to use those TPUs. Then I think the question becomes, okay, but most applications we're building today using TPUs is just one part of the application. There's all these other things I got to do as well, and so then the question becomes, should I just use all of Google services for my app? Or can I do it in a way where maybe for 10% of this app I'm building, I'm going to use TPUs, but for the 90%, I'm going to use open source software. I'm going to use a platform like, like us, like Mesosphere, to get that open source software in a, in a, in a cloud-like way so that if at some point in time I decide that I don't want to be running on Google anymore and I don't want to be using the TPUs, I only have 10% of my job that I need to, to fix, right? Now, 10% of, of the application that I need to go and figure out how I'm going to run that application using GPUs on a different cloud or using GPUs on prem or anything else. But the other 90%, I can move the application, right? And, and again, I mean, uh, uh, the, the application is one part, the data is the other part. You've got to be able to move the data. But I can do that. I can copy the data. The clouds might not make it easy for me, but I can do it if I really need to. But when the application, when they're tied to particular APIs, it's very, very hard to move it. Engineers are lazy. They don't want to refactor things to talk to different APIs. I shouldn't even say they're lazy. They're just, it's yeah, not, that's not fun, you know? It's it, like, who yeah. wants to do that? I want to build the next cool thing. Mm. So if I've built myself against a couple of proprietary APIs, that's where I'm going to be. I'm going to be in wherever those proprietary APIs are for a long time. Right, right. So, uh, so when, when you look at multi-cloud, what is the biggest, uh, threat you know towards multi cloud is it vendor lock in efforts going on or is that sometimes people choose a service because it's super efficient yeah. or they get the tools so they choose to be logged yeah i mean i i'd so i i think the the, the biggest threat to multi cloud is that so, so first we're at kubecon right even some of the tools that are helping us become less vendor dependent like Kubernetes, um, with the idea being, hey, I can package my stuff in, in containers, so Docker and Kubernetes, and I can package my stuff into containers, and I can do orchestration in my containers. And since I can run Kubernetes on any of the clouds, I should be good to go, right? I should be able to, but not so fast, right? E you know, th there's threats where you start using things like cloud provider integration, where you get edge ELBs, you get elastic load balancers provision for you, you get EBS provision for you, you get all these, these things and the way in which that happens tends to be very cloud specific. And ultimately over time, um, even though you're running your containers on an open source piece of software, you end up tying into all these other services. Um, and that ultimately leads to a place where you, ca you can't just move your application from, from, from that cloud. You, know, you can't just take your Kubernetes app and you can't move it. So I think that's the first threat, which I'll almost call shadow shadow lock-in, right? You know, you think you're not getting locked in because you're, you know, you're, you're working with, with Kubernetes, but in actuality, because you're using all these other infrastructure services under the covers, you're actually really getting locked in. So I, I think that's one of the first threats. And um, I think that the, the second part that ends up being tricky is there's a lot of services around the infrastructure that need to be really generic. I am services, things around security, authentication, and authorization. Um, uh, you know, of course, I just mentioned networking and storage. All these things really need to be abstracted sufficiently, so people can be programming their applications against particular APIs. Not just application developers, but infrastructure operators as well. They can be building their things against open source APIs, and then they, they have that ability to actually move. So when, when we first created CSI, the, the, the c container storage interface, which just went GA as part of, um, as part of the most recent c Kubernetes uh, uh, launch, um, 1.13, when we did that, um, you know, a big reason for that was because we wanted to provide that abstraction where people could be doing things at the CSI interfaces and we could make multi-cloud be a real thing. And I think there's a bunch more of that work that we need to start doing as well um, uh, uh, for a bunch of the other components to make people really be able to do multi-cloud. 
Awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And, uh, and once again, thanks for talking to me today. Of course. And glad hopefully to be here. I'll, we'll see you again at the next conference. It sounds, awesome. it sounds like a plan. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yep.